sideshows are still going strong, although admittedly they don't draw the same crowds that they used to in the 1800s. It's interesting to look back on the performers of yesteryear and see how they became icons of the circus culture we now know and love. But the stories of the people behind the legends are sometimes just as interesting as what they brought to the stage. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our weekly uploads. In today's episode of Unusual As Usual, we're looking at the hard-hitting story of the human blockhead, aka Melvin Burkhart. Clarence Melvin Burkhart was born on the 16th of February 1907 in Atlanta, Georgia. He dropped out of school in his early teens and moved to Kentucky where he worked as a Western Union boy. One of the perks of his job was that his uniform allowed him to get into theatres for free. One day he got the chance to get on stage when he was selected as a volunteer by one of the acts. He walked up the theatre steps, onto the stage, tripped up and the audience erupted in laughter. That was the moment Burkhart knew he wanted to entertain people for a living. In 1927, at the age of 20, he joined a small one-ring circus. While traveling, he continued to refine his skills and add new sideshow feats to his repertoire. Here, he worked under a number of titles, depending on which act he happened to be performing at the time. As the anatomical wonder, he could inflate one lung at a time, elongate his neck to an incredible degree and make his shoulder blades protrude grotesquely out of his back. As the man without a stomach, he would perform the yogi gut suck, which involved him sucking his stomach into his spine. As the two-faced man, he would contort his facial muscles in such a way that on one half he was smiling, while simultaneously on the other half he was frowning. But not only that, he was also able to walk on broken glass, perform the blade box and eat fire. At one point, performing as many as nine of the 14 acts advertised on the banner line. But it wasn't until he devised an entirely new act that he became a prominent figure in sideshow history. You see, as a young man, Burkhart had ambitions to become a prize fighter, so he became a boxer. He had six fights in the ring and lost every single one of them. With a record six losses and zero wins, you can imagine he spent quite a lot of his time sitting in hospital waiting rooms. It was at one of these frequent visits that he had a realization. Each time he visited the hospital, the doctor seemed to remove more and more damaged cartilage from his repeatedly broken nose. He watched them as they went in and out of his nose with scalpels and long hemostats, and that's when he had his light bulb moment. He figured the less cartilage in his nasal cavity, the more room there will be for an inanimate object, such as a six inch steel nail. He got home later that night, found a hammer, dug out a nail, and the rest, as they say, is history. When Robert Ripley saw Burkhart's new act, he dubbed him the Human Blockhead, and the name has stuck ever since. With enough practice, he was able to put a nail into his nose as easily as you could put a finger in yours. He became well known for his banter and cheesy jokes in between and during his stunts. People would say, is this show all you? Where are the other performers? Of course, there were other performers, giants, dwarves, half men, but Burkhart was such a strong personality on stage, he performed a short spot in between each performer, falling back on his show host days as a young man. He loved to help people, especially fellow performers. He was the one who urged William Dirks to overcome his shyness and become his own talker, which would help him sell his pitch cards. Dirks' stage name was the man with three eyes. Melvin told him he would make a fortune if he spoke on stage, and with a little coaching, he did. Not only that, Melvin was particularly proud of introducing Dirks to the woman who would later become his wife. They were a match made in sideshow heaven, the three-eyed man and the alligator girl. But that's a story for another time. 
During his 60 year career as a performer, he worked with the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus, the James E. Straits Carnival, Hubert's Museum and Ripley's Believe It or Not. Later in life, while in his 80s, he worked at the Coney Island Sideshow. This is where he spent the last four years of his career. Over the years, Burkhart taught others how to perform the human blockhead act. When asked how to do it, he would simply say, it's simple, pound the spike into your head. If it doesn't kill you, you're a human blockhead. Although I would probably recommend you give boxing a try first. Burkhart retired in 1989, but continued to perform for tourists and journalists right up until his death in 2001, at the age of 94. Any old bonehead can shove something up their nose, but Melvin's patter and comedy made it a staple act in the sideshow world. He helped those less fortunate than him and entertained those who were in need of entertaining. Even in death, Burkhart remains a source of constant inspiration to all who stumble across him, which can be seen in the performances of sideshow acts from around the world to the comfort of your own home on TV with The Simpsons. In fact, Melvin's act took quite a literal meaning in the 2003 indie horror film Nails by Andrei Iskanov about an unhinged KGB agent hearing voices, which lead him to hammering nails into his skull, each nail driving him deeper into madness. And there we have it, the hard hitting story of the human blockhead, Melvin Burkhart. Since Melvin, there have been hundreds, if not thousands of blockheads, but he was the original. How about you? Do you think he had a bit of a screw loose or was he a genius in his field? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more peculiar people, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.